About 1% of the population has epilepsy and there are many unmet needs in the epilepsy treatments. Uh, and one of them is that we don't have anti-epileptogenesis uh, therapies. What does it mean? About one quarter of all epilepsies start with an acute brain insult, such as stroke, uh, brain trauma, or uh, with a tumor. And then they follow with uh, epileptic seizures as a consequence of the brain insult. There's a certain time period between the acute insult and the first seizure, which is called um, epileptogenesis with a lot of mechanisms going on there um, and these offer of course uh, opportunities to treat and to prevent the occurrence of the first seizure. That sounds quite easy but it's extremely complicated. First of all there are a lot of different mechanisms going on over a different time starting from um, disruption of the blood-brain barrier, um, destruction of neurons, necrosis, apoptosis, um, the several genes are switched on or switched off, epigenetic changes, inflammatory changes take place. Uh, all of them occur at different time points after the insult. We don't know precisely what occurs when and having this cascade of events it's extremely difficult to attack that with one single drug or with one uh, preventive measure uh, for a certain time period. We don't know what we shall give when in order to prevent the first seizure. There are several researches going on um, and it comes down to a point that um, we need to answer several questions when we want to design an anti-epileptogenesis trial. The first and most important is the selection of the patient group um, where we want to prevent epilepsy. Um, several diseases um, are in discussion. One of them is of course a patient um, having a stroke with a high risk of having a first epileptic seizure. Some of the stroke patients have a 60% risk of having a seizure within the first year. That would be a quite good population in order to prevent that. The second uh, important question is which drug should we use? It has been clear that most anti-epileptic drugs which we use to prevent seizures uh, in the chronic setting are not anti-epileptic per se neither in the animal experiment nor in human beings. So far all anti-epileptic drug trials failed in humans because they were done too simply. Now we go a different route. We think about the mechanisms and try to specifically um, give a drug which prevents epilepsy or hits a certain target. Um, these drugs belong to several categories. Some of them are inflammatory, some of them are statins, lipid lowering drugs, uh, some of them are antihypertensives, some of them are anti-inflammatory drugs. So um, it's not so clear what will be the best way, but there are at the moment at least three studies planned and they will probably start at the end of the year or beginning next year um, to prevent uh, epilepsy after an insult. There's another ex aspect which is extremely important uh, when we think about anti-epileptogenesis. We have a brain insult and as a consequence we generate seizures or the brain generates seizures but there are also other symptoms for example depression or cognitive disturbances which we have to address. It might well be that the drug is effective in preventing the development of epilepsy, but it's not effective in preventing the cognitive disturbance following a brain insult, or not effective in preventing depression after a brain insult. On the other hand, there might be drugs which are effective in preventing post-stroke depression or post-trauma depression, or helps uh, fighting the cognitive disturbances. Uh, in animal experiments, we know that quite well that an excellent anti-epileptic drug which we use in humans, valproic acid, is sometimes effective in stopping the seizures after status epilepticus, uh, but not preventing 
post-status epilepsy, but coming out with a better cognitive performance of the animals. So these two effects must be separated. And um, it's, I think, wishful thinking that we have one drug effective against seizure development, being truly anti-epileptogenic, and also being truly anti-depressogenic or preventing cognitive disturbances. We have to think about that and address each of these symptoms in a different way.